It has been a crazy year. So many things happened, but first we need to look back to 2018 when we released our time lapse A Taste of Taiwan. Within 24 hours, everything went totally out of control and we were everywhere on the news in Taiwan. It was amazing and it was totally unexpected. I had just been shooting a film and Jonas did the editing and we released it like a gift for Taiwan, but we never expected this attention. I had this dream. I really wanted to bring Jonas to Taiwan. He had never been there and I tried really hard and very often I was so close but still so far away. But in the end, finally, I had a meeting with Taiwan Tourism in January in their office in Taipei. I came back to Denmark in February and then finally it happened. We were finally coming to Taiwan together. And not only that, it was partnering up with Taiwan Tourism, Eva Air, MSI, Sonology, Seagate, A-Data, and a lot of nice hotels who all sponsored our accommodation. We were on the way to our big adventure. Once we stepped into the Eva flight, they already knew our names. We knew, wow, we are kind of like their VIP. We had an amazing welcome to Taiwan. Ni hao, Taiwan. <laughs> Next morning, we already had an appointment at Taipei 101. So maybe you don't know it, but our A Taste of Taiwan is actually shown on the big curved display at the Taipei 101 Observatory. Taipei 101 also arranged a photo shoot. We were like the stars of a day, and we were featured in the Taipei 101 magazine. It was also Jonah's first time to try Din Tai Fung. So I could introduce him to Xiaolong Bao, the soup dumplings, and he absolutely loved it. Later on, my friend Nikita brought us some of my favorite black sugar bubble milk tea from Chen San Ding. It's so good. That day we were also shooting at Xiangsan area. There is a very famous spot on Instagram. We went to the footbridge at Xini area where Jonas did a very nice revealing Taipei 101 hyperlapse move. We ended up the night at Rao Her Night Market. How was it? It was beyond amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think he will be in very love with Taiwan very soon. Yeah. <laughs> this is his first day and he already loves this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Good. No matter where you go, no matter where you go, there's amazing food. Good Early next morning, we went to Yelio, where we met up with PTS Good Morning Taiwan. Right after Yelio, we went to the high-speed rail and we headed down for Kaohsiung. And I was so amazed by the size of the bed. I get lost. I will, I will get lost in this one. I don't know how, how can I find my way out of it. It's too big. We went straight out to do some hyperlapse and then my friend picked us up and took us for a very painful leg massage. It was also Jonah's first time to try a delicious hot pot. Next morning, I went out and I picked up Luisa coffee. We worked a bit from our room, drank our coffee, and then we headed out to the uh, Pier Art Gallery where we had to shoot another hyperlapse. All the way down to that building. Because we have to um, yeah, get shooting soon. Looks very delicious. The Kaohsiung Grand Hotel. So many people texted me and told me this is not in Kaohsiung, this is in Taipei. But no, this is actually a beautiful grand hotel right there in Kaohsiung. And we are pretty tired. Very, very tired. We even don't really know what day it is. Next morning we were lucky. My friend promised to drive us around for a full day. After several hours at Fuguanzan, we went to Ida World. It started to rain and it was pouring down. It's super rainy right now. Henrik, 
keeping the pace out in the rain. At the same time, Jonas started to tell me he was feeling a little bit cold and uncomfortable, so he would go inside. I decided to stay out there with my umbrella and just uh, get my shot done, no matter what. Suddenly the rain stopped. Jonas came out and he did his hyperlapse move. We went to the doctor, it was packed with people and Jonas was looking more and more sick. An assistant came to check the temperature of Jonas and it was way above 39. Now we are going to uh, to grab a cab and get to Ambash Amba Hotel in Chimending. Jonas was still feeling not too well, so we let him rest at the hotel while I went out shooting. In the evening, we met up with our volunteer translator Sunny, and when we had our ice cream for dessert, Jonas actually enjoyed it, and he was starting to come back to life. We had been worried about Jonah's health and the weather as well as it was raining in Taipei when we got back. But next morning it was sunny, we went to Baoangong, Jonas was feeling better, this was going to be a big day for us. After finishing at the temple we went straight to Linan Tai where we met up with the model LV and my friend Amy. Reporting from Linan Tai with LV as a model. Hello, Jonas doing hyperlapse and then we have <laughs> this was the most complicated day of shooting for Jonas because we had to do the hyperlapses we had been planned for so long with a model and we just had this one single chance to make it happen. So hard, oh my god! <laughs> and after Linan Tai, we went to Ximending for the final stage. Months earlier, I had been planning from a simple tourist map where I thought Jonas could make his move. To do this way is so complicated. In the world today, where people have gimbals, they have GoPro 7 or 8, you can actually do this kind of move very easy just by walking. But to do it this way, the real way, as Jonas does it, which is the real, smooth, perfect, professional way, is so complicated and only very few people in the world can do it. Fucking dope! Fucking dope! <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck, fuck. Everything could go wrong, but Jonas just nailed it. Everything just smooth. Finishing up this amazing day, we had to celebrate it with a nice hot pot with some beers, and we were so happy. How was today? <laughs> Fucking awesome. <laughs> so many impressions. Next morning, we went to the high speed rail again. It was time to go to Taichung. At Taichung, we only had one location for that first day, the Fengjia Night Market. We wanted to do a full day-to-night session at the Fengjia Night Market, so Jonas had to move through the night market, and I had to protect him from the scooters and people passing by, and also had to move trash cans or other obstacles in the way to make sure he had a clear path to do it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Next day was my birthday, so we celebrated by having a small piece of cake and some coffee at the Luisa coffee shop while we did some work. After finish the work on our computers, we went for the Rainbow Village where we shoot some more scenes. It was extremely hot. I had to send Jonas back to the hotel. He was feeling really bad again. And next day we were going back to Taipei. It would be our last day before flying back to Denmark. On our last day, we met up with my friend Nikita and Tommy, a young videographer from Taiwan. Nikita brought some special medicine for Jonas and it kind of helped to make him feel a little bit stronger and he was okay. Suddenly, he started to feel bad again. My friend Nikita was trying to help giving him some Chinese treatment. Early next morning, we had to go back to Denmark. After a long 24-hour journey, we could finally arrive back in Denmark and head back home. While Jonas was recovering, I was out shooting a video for MSI using their computer. After Jonas recovered, we started to make videos for our partners ADATA, XPD, Synology and Seagate. We 
started to do the storyboarding for A Taste of Taiwan 2. Of all the scenes we wanted to use, from all the footage I had done and which we had done together. And I was traveling back to Taiwan again. The Computex computer show in Taipei took place right after I landed back in Taiwan. I was giving presentations of our work at the MSI booth, together with other international creators. And I also spent the evenings together with the other creators, so I took them out to some of the places, such as the Rauhe Night Market, so they could try a little bit of the specialties of Taiwan. Meanwhile, Jonas was editing on A Taste of Taiwan 2, and he started to show a little bit of the progress on our blog. So as you can see, like the, the music is kind of slowly building up. While Jonas was busy editing on A Taste of Taiwan 2, I took a flight from Taiwan to Hong Kong. The weather was perfect, the view from the flight was so amazing and so beautiful to see Hong Kong from this way. And I was happy because I was going to meet another great time-lapse photographer from Norway, Morten Rustad. I had been talking to Morten for a while, and since I knew Hong Kong quite well, I decided to fly over to meet up with him and go shooting together. Looking for like only like 200 meters. And we are, all... are we already feeling exhausted? I need water, I need a little break. So we just hiked Devil's Peak. Now I know why it's called Devil's Peak. I'm totally not in shape for this. Oh my god. But the sunset of Hong Kong was amazing. It was really beautiful. What a night. We ended up the night at Heidi Lao Hot Pot. Next day we just had a lunch together and it was my time to fly back to Taiwan. It was also the day when the protest started back in June. And while I was heading for the airport, the taxi driver told me if this happens to Hong Kong, Hong Kong is finished. Back in Taipei again, I went with one of my good friends to shoot with a nice view at a great temple in Taipei. What a view we had there! It was so great, I could see so many familiar places. Meanwhile, Jonas was up really early in the morning to shoot a beautiful sunrise in Denmark with all the fog moving across the landscape. So amazing. And once again, I would hit the road and I would go to Taichung. And the next morning, I went to do a model shoot. I haven't been shooting models for a long time because I've been so busy with our time-lapse production and all the landscape shooting. So it was nice for a change to get back and do a little bit of model shooting. I ended up at the same location doing a time-lapse because this view from the abandoned building in Taichung was absolutely gorgeous. Jonas continued to do really magic scenes in Denmark and found another epic spot. River Valley right here. And hopefully capture some, uh, some fog. Or... It's still ramping down. I think it's going to be really beautiful. And the sun is, uh, is coming up and the, the sunbeams are just uh, hitting the fog in the valley. I think it's going to be really beautiful. So. It's very, very windy. Suddenly just strikes. Also, he went out in the storm and almost got caught by the wind. It was crazy, but he got an amazing time lapse, as you can see. I was still having good time in Taiwan with lovely warm weather and did a bicycle trip to Da Lao Chang.
Back in Denmark, Jonas was shooting at a concert, and I believe that the experience from Fongjia Night Market and Ximending came to good use because Jonas had to move through crowds of thousands of drunk party people. And then it was time for a taste of Taiwan too. The film was ready for release. I met up with Elvi at the Amba Song San Hotel who hosted us for the night. We had a lovely dinner with a big steak and Amba offered us a great room for the streaming night. It was ready for the premiere of A Taste of Time 1-2. Elvi and I was online from Taipei and through a Skype call we had Jonas in our stream from Denmark. I have been using quite some time to set up everything and it worked. Suddenly the Amba Hotel rolled down a big cinematic screen and we could watch A Taste of Taiwan 2 on the premiere night with surround sound and also this huge screen in the room. Even though there were just a few people there, it was really amazing and a beautiful ending of our release night. Once again we hit the news after releasing A Taste of Taiwan 2. It was not as massive as the first time, but we still hit a lot of news both in Denmark and in Taiwan showing our latest baby, A Taste of Taiwan 2. The mission was completed. Thank you everyone for your support so far. We are really, really happy and so overwhelmed by the support we have been getting from everyone. Thanks to all our partners throughout the year and uh, see you next time.